Shadow Dan, Shadow Dan. Let the Shadow Dance begin. Yep, Shadow Dan, Shadow Dan. Stripping man, stripping man. I feel so vulnerable. Inside joke. Yep, I feel so vulnerable. <laughs> Through, absolutely through. And we're gonna get ready to bring it out. I plan to keep this short, Lord willing. Let's see if I can see the video on my iPad. Why not that I can't? I'll do a sanity check on either my um iPad or laptop computer can see the video. We get our hands on you devils. Oh, we! The spirit has just been like, patience, my son. I'm your son, you know? Patience! Oh, my goodness gracious. My goodness gracious. And see, simps are not really, they're not even thinking along those lines. They're just thinking, where's my next paycheck for my minimum wage? You know, where's my check? Okay, so they're going to get it too. Starting with Israelites. Simps. Every day, just, just fantasizing, visualizing about judgment. If that's not you, you're not in really in the truth. You're just here. You're just basically taking up space and still in oxygen. You have a right to remain silent. Okay? Crimes. All right, we're going to go ahead and get ready to get into it. Just fantasizing about judgments. That's where my heart is. Okay? I don't know about you. But that is where my heart and soul rest. Judgment, starting with simps, Israelites. I thought we were boys, dog. Yo, 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 you know. And then we stay at the bottom and continue to get our ass kicked. Anyway, sorry for the rambling. Shalom. Barakata Yahweh. Barakata Yahweh Shai. Barakata Yahweh. Barakata Yahweh Shai. Kohalaimla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Erkot Kadash. To the 144,000. And double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. To the beloved of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel of the house of David. And at the beginning, I said all praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai. This is why Proverbs say, what is His name and what is His Son's name, if thou canst tell. In uh, Proverbs 30 and 4, I used to get a lot of scents and bug outs. What is this Yahweh Shai? It's in the Bible. Read. Read. The Bible says that the Most High is not a man, not a goddess, not a god. A lot of saints worship their woman's backside and opening in the front. It says that the Most High is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man. You see? So the Most High, and then you have a second spirit created. Yahweh Shai. The black man don't read that black mindset. Okay, the boys in the hood, good homie type of nigga. They don't they don't really read anything other than a pork a barbecue pork menu. But anyway, I want to go ahead and jump right into it. <laughs> Yesterday I'm, I did a live stream and I made a comment that the most high son's blood is so valuable. He's not going to just plant his tabernacle into an area or into a people that's going to devalue the sacrifice. If you know anything about real estate, 
you can have a $50 million home. But if you plant it in a bad, amongst a bad people or amongst a corrupt people, you devalue your investment. So regardless of how expensive that tabernacle is, it must be planted into a holy people. Holy means separate to protect that estate. You know, real estate is my thing, you know? So you can't take a expensive $50 million home and plant it in an area that will devalue that home. This is why the Bible says that riches are not comely for a niggard. Your shave head, baby faced pastor is not going to teach these scriptures. Tap, <laughs> tap dancing with a red beret on and, and, and hitting the tambourines together. So, you know, I thought about it and the spirit jumped on me to go into that. I didn't realize I was speaking directly from the scriptures. Matter of fact, yesterday I also made a comment, you no, know, the day before yesterday, on the 8th, <clears throat> many Israelites need their ass kicked, right from the scriptures. Remember the money changers. What did Yahweh Shai do to the money changers? Taking this doctrine, taking this truth, and using it to make merchandise or to get paid. Where's my check type black Afro-American mindsets? Remember, he created what's called a, um, a cat of nine tails. When it hits you, that whip, it's got many tentacles. And when it hits, it digs into your flesh. And as you pull away, it rips your flesh off of you. Well, that's what you are anyway. Pulling the flesh of our nationality or this doctrine, this proper covering off of our people. So that's what Yahweh Shai attacked these Israelites with. What's called a cat of nine tails. <laughs> Let's look that up. Once again, I was speaking from the scriptures. Many Israelites just need their ass kicked to be, to be blunt. Let's pull this up. The Romans would use this thing too as a torture device. Well, I got the deep, utmost love and respect for Yahweh Shai already. This is beautiful. See? The cat of nine tails. So we got those same men taking this truth and using it to make merchandise today. Those same spirits are back. So once again, I was saying stuff and didn't realize it was really a scripture to go with it. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Is that not written? So I want to go back to the real estate analogy. The Lord is not going to plant his investment into a people that are full of darkness, full of pitch, which represents sin. Let's go here to the book of Sirach 24. The book of Sirach chapter 24, verse 3. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. This is Yahweh Shai. He is the nurturing spirit. That came after our Heavenly Father. So he portrays the nurturing spirit. You see, that gives us the milk, the breast milk, if you will. <coughs> So he was created after the Most High. So the, the, the Lord created on earth as it is in heaven when he created Adam and then Eve, the nurturing spirit. Anyway, let's keep going. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwelt in high places 
and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. So Yahweh Shai is coming back on the father ship. A so-called UFO. A so-called spaceship, if you will. A starship. I alone compass the circuit of heaven and walk in the bottom of the deep. When I'm reading this, I'm thinking about Proverbs chapter 8. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai created the first fruits or the lesser lights after him. He is the light of the world. Then he, then he created the Allahim, gods, lords. Yes, yeah, go from here. Do of thy youth, Hebrews 1 and 3. I'm not going to make this a three hour lesson. The elect can get it. But if you still need hooked on phonics and all types of additional devices, it's a waste of time. And I'm speaking in mockery to those that have willful ignorance. They choose to be ignorant because of their pride. Hebrews 1, verse 2. Let's go to 1. God who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So the Lord always speaks through his men, the prophets that had been since the world began, or since the beginning of the world. Since I butchered it, let's get it. Let's go to um, Acts. Acts 3. And that's how the spirit works. You think you're going to do or say certain things and the spirit takes over. <clears throat> Acts 3. Let's get it in, in Luke 1. Let's go to, um, yeah, okay, here it is. Acts 3 and 21. It shows up in Luke 1 and 70 as well. Acts 3 and 21. Let's go to 20. And he shall send Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, since the world began, so the prophets are not done away with, the lesser lights created after Yahweh Shai, collectively the Allahim in Genesis 1, lords, gods, that are diligently teaching in the last days. If the energy is not focused on the ministry, it's focused on the world. There is no gray area either of the Most High or of the devil, sleazy E, and the spiritual demon Satan by default. Let's go back to Hebrews 1. <clears throat> Hebrews 1, verse 1. See, God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So it's happening again. <coughs> have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So there are many worlds, but pursuant to Isaiah 45 and 17, Israel is a world without end. Elect is what starts the building of that kingdom. So the elect is obtaining the wisdom the knowledge and understanding to be established as thrones, dominions, kings on earth with Yahweh Shai, who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he have by himself purged our sins, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high, see? So Yahweh Shai is dwelling in that pillar on a throne. 
that we read in Surat 24. Shalom, beloved brother, just made you a moderator. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai Barakata, Hashem Kakadash. See? Being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Yahweh Shai is above everything. Under the most high. That's the order. So when we pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, the most high is going to replicate his majesty on the earth, which is a projection of the heavenly realm. You see? So Yahweh Shai represents that nurturing spirit where we are sucking the milk from him, the breasts of nurturement or uh, nourishment and nurture. See, let's go back to Sirach 24. I'm not going to make this three hours, waste the time. The elect gets it right away because the Holy Spirit makes the elect of quick understanding. Not run that by me again. You know, what was that? What is this breast milk and stuff? There's the door. There's the door. Let's go back to Sirach 24. Let's go back. Let's go to verse um, 4. I dwell in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. So he's on the right hand, the most high. So he's that first chief high priest and the only chief high priest. The first church is being gathered by the preaching and teaching of the word. See? So the Most High is just gathering together the congregation of the saints. Brother Ahadan, Proverbs 16, Proverbs 15 and 5. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Beautiful. See, so the elect hear the voice, hear the heavenly father, and recognize it. Why? Because they were in the first church in the sky. Okay, the heavenly ram. I tried to make that rhyme on purpose that time. See? So this harmony... This song is a familiar sound to the Lord's saints, elect. Okay? They've already heard it before. So teaching brings everything back into remembrance. The spiritual third eye is being opened up. See? Surat 24. <coughs> Surat 24. Let's go to 6. in the waves of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation I got a possession. So remember we read in Hebrews 1 he made the worlds but his sanctity or his holiness will only dwell in a clean tabernacle. You see you're not going to take an 80 million dollar home and put it smack dab in the boys in the middle of boys in the hood. Every night, AK-47 fire. Ta -ta 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 -ta. You smell an endo, twigs, and weed every damn day. You're gonna devalue your property. And you gotta buy a bulletproof vest and a damn bulletproof vehicle just to leave and travel to and from. Bug out. So your harvestra is not gonna dwell in filth with a bunch of orangutans chimps and gorillas and apes running just total confusion. So this is why the elect must be born again and be cleansed by the word. See, let's go to Sirach 24 and 7. With all these I sought rest and in whose inheritance shall I abide. So he's only going to dwell 
in a clean, pristine congregation of sovereignty, holiness, which means separate. Somebody posts uh, Revelation 21. I think it's three. That the tabernacle of the Lord is with men. Real men, not simps, brokebacks, gangbangers, and ghetto boys and boys in the hood. They're going to be destroyed by fire on this side because they're dwelling with their father, the devil. Sleazy E. What crimes? What crimes? Let's get this one. Do of thy youth. Yep. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Let's get that. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Hey man, I am I'm struggling, man. Pray for me. Second <clears throat> Corinthians 5 or 16. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Hamashiach after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. So that that flesh must die to be reborn through a spiritual uh, mindset and temple, a cleansed temple, which starts with our mind. Verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Wherefore, if any man be in the Mashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Beautiful. So the holy tabernacle will dwell in a new earth and a sovereign people. And that new earth goes back to the Hebrew word akino, which means refreshed. Same earth, but cleansed by fire. And the elect is being purged and cleansed by the fiery trial of adversity and the word which is likened unto a fire. Lively stones. Brother Aharon, Revelation 21 and 3, Brother Aharon. Let's get that one. Simps can't get this. They're just worried about their new minimum wage promotion and their new position at the job under boss. I got here early this morning there, boss, after the $5 a month increase. The Lord's got to kill me. <laughs> he can't make this shit up. Man. I'm coming in at 5 in the morning now, boss. Thank you for the $5, $5 a month increase. The Lord's got to get rid of a lot of you simps. Yes, dear. Let's go to Revelation 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, the what? The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. So if you're still gangbanging, sleeping with other men's wives, the Lord is going to F you up. Still being a Jezebel telling a man to shut up and sit your ass down somewhere like he's two years old in diapers. The Lord is going to kill you too. Walking around with damn a camel's hair on with a perm. The Lord's got to get rid of your ass. Tired of the games. Let's go back to that. Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So to put this mega trillion dollar, it's above trillion. I don't even know what the next layer is. You cannot put it in a bad neighborhood. That area has to be cleaned up. You're not going to devalue your tabernacle or your investment. Or the blood of Yahweh Shai. See, let's go back to Sirach. The elect is already like, yeah, I got it. This don't need to be about a six hour video. You must be out of your damn mind. See that tabernacle? Let's go here. Oh, here it is. Sirach 24. Let's go to verse 10. In the holy tabernacle 
I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. So the stones of the elect must be lively, purged, lively. It, it, whenever you look at, when you got hot stones, you're able to do things with it. Prepare a meal. You need so forth and so on. You can get warmed up. It's, it, you know, it, it, it brings value to the table. You see? So the elect is going to dwell with Yahweh Shai. And then ultimately all Israel. Let's read that again. Surah 24. Verse, let's go up to verse 7. Surah 24 and 7. With all these I sought rest, in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thine inheritance in Israel. See that? So that's the difference. So the elect are not going to bring shame or discredit or devalue the Lord's precious investment built on the blood of Yahweh Shai. Surah 24 and 9. He created me from the beginning before the world. I shall never fail. So, the monument, or in the Hebrew, to Zion, Zion in the English, is unmovable when it's planted with the spiritual foundation of Yahweh Shai and built on sure temperate mortar. So it cannot be moved. It's indestructible, indestructible. I need to go back to English class. It's indestructible. Unmovable. Matter of fact, let's go to Psalms 125. Some, somebody think I'm making all this up. I'm not that smart to make all this up. Let's go to Psalms 125. <clears throat> A book of Psalms, chapter 125, verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. Say what? Which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. So the Most High is not going to build a tabernacle amongst, amongst blood drinkers, adulterers, murderers. But the elect is born again, purged from that pitch, that debauchery, filth, bloodthirsty. I mean, look at the wicked global elite. They drink blood so that they can preserve their youth. You think the Most High is going to put a holy tabernacle in the midst of high-level warlocks and witches that drink blood and pop little boys in the backside? You must be out of your entire mental faculties and really just need to be quiet. The Lord ain't going to put no holy tabernacle in the midst of those that go and drop bombs on poor people and take their land, going after gold, oil, and drugs. So that God loves everybody, we're all equal. Once again, you can't even count. How many are equal to the Rothschilds monetarily? $700 trillion investments. That's old data, by the way. They've gone up to the next level after the trillionaire bracket. So a lot of people just love to talk through their emotions. Psalms 125 and 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. See? So Yahweh Shai is eagerly waiting to establish his church on earth and sit on the throne of his father David. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. That's the eternal kingdom of promise. 
that's coming. See, watch this about these wicked global 13 Illuminati families. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Remember, in real estate, you got lots. You got a $10 million lot, and you got a $50 million lot. You got a $100 million lot, so forth and so on. But if you put that in the middle of Compton or Boys in the Hood, you know, then you've just destroyed your investment. Put it in the middle of a zoo. Nothing but drive-bys every night. You can't even go out and drink a nice cup of tea. That's foolishness. So the Lord is going to destroy the wicked. Psalms 125 and 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. So the elect must be cleansed, reborn, purged. Get away from adultery, murder. You see, weed, smoking that garbage, chasing after other men's wives. Get your own wife. How about that? Committing murder, contemplating or thinking about murder. Then you're not invited unto this, this congregation of the saints that are born again, repented, renewed, and have been made after the image of Yahweh Shai, the breath of life. Let's go back. I've got to get ready to close this out. <clears throat> See? We read that forever, remember? Let's go back to it. In Sirach 24. Sirach 24, verse... Let's go to verse... Um, yeah, Sirach 24 and 9. He created me from the beginning before the world. I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Monument to Zion, Zion. Likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. That's the elect, honorable, born again, renewed, cleansed. I want to go back to what I read and lost my place. Yeah, we read that never fail. That's forever. <clears throat> There's something else I wanted. Yeah, that's good. He made the point. He made the point. Yeah, let's go to um, Surat 36. That's what I'm thinking of. Surat 36. Let's go there. Let's go to Surat 36. So the Lord is building in a good neighborhood, if you will. He's gathering with his saints, elect. The first spirits created after Yahweh Shai. So he's going to put his investment in a valuable lot. I keep forgetting where to go, where I was just left off. My goodness gracious. I need a move in reader. <laughs> Let's go to Sirach 36. See, we're going to read it again. Surah 36, let's go to verse 13. Surah 36 and 12, let's go to 11. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. In the beginning, so that first world that's closest and nearest and dearest to the Most High is the world of Israel. The first spirits created. To take that a step further, the first fruits of that bunch or that batch are the Lord's elect. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel 
whom thou hast named thy firstborn. The firstborn gets all of the inheritance. Is that not written? Well, that starts with Yahweh Shai, the first spirit, followed by the first fruits of the elect of the house of Israel. And then Israel, the rest of Israel, and then the other nations, the worlds, will fall under that authority of the Lord's new holy high mountain, under the new kingdom, under Jacob. O be merciful unto Jerusalem, the holy city, the place of thy rest. That's where he's going to put his investment at. A new holy mountain amongst his saints that are born again. Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. So that he's not going to devalue the sacrifice of the blood of Yahweh Shai. It's priceless, valuable. So it must be separate or holy. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. So this is a signature mark of the Lord's true prophets that are being raised up right in the scene or the transition from one old world unto the new, Jacob. The Bible says in 2 um, Ezra chapter 6, verse 9, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So the beginning is being reset or renewed or refreshed through the lively stones or the first spirits of the Alahayim that were created by Yahweh Shai. See? So the beginning is being reset or paradise, Idon, Eden. Matter of fact, let's prove that. Then I got to close out. See? Oh man, I got ahead of myself. This is too much. I got to figure out where to start reading. Let's go here. So, right, 24, verse 25. He filleth all things with his wisdom as thy son and as Tigris in the time of the new fruits. This is the new kingdom that's being developed. As at the beginning, but bigger and better. A new kingdom and the first fruits are the harvest which is also the end of the world which is also Jacob transitioning to a beginning a new beginning you see possess thou them as at the beginning <laughs> so right 24 verse 26 he maketh the understanding to abound like Euphrates and as Jordan in the time of the harvest. I didn't know that was coming up next. I'd be lying to you if I told you I did. See? So the harvest are the first fruits that are being reestablished or gathered as a batch or a church. Preceding the establishment of paradise, the kingdom of heaven. On earth. So right 24 and 25. He filleth all things with his wisdom. As thy son and as tigress. In the time of the new fruits. He maketh the understanding to abound. Like Euphrates. And as Jordan in the time of the harvest. He maketh the doctrine of knowledge. Appear as the light. And as Gion in the time of vintage. So. Wisdom builds a kingdom. Not money, holes, and clothes. All a nigga knows. That don't build a kingdom. That builds downtown Compton and boys in the hood. And Philly. Okay, nothing but drive-bys. Smelling indo wigs and tweets. And can't even get a good, a good night's sleep. Because you're in the middle of a damn war zone. 
boom, boom, boom. You know, that's not heaven. That's hell on earth. So it's fruitless to try to build or establish a kingdom on earth. What was that bugged out Israelite group talking about we need to go buy farmland and build like a new Jerusalem or some crap and go buy land from the devil? Then you got sewage costs, land costs, and taxes. Irrigation costs and taxes. That's not heaven. That bugged out group, let's go buy land in Georgia. You dumbass. Anyway, so the Lord is going to establish an eternal kingdom built up through the spirit of divine wisdom. The most high. He make of the understanding to abound. Let's go back down to verse 27. He make of the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light and as Gion in the time of the vintage. The first man knew her not perfectly. No more shall the last find her out. See? So Adam, although the breath of life was breathed into him, he still was a flesh vessel, not elevated or exalted to the height that Shai is coming back in. Perfection, all power and glory. The full-blown spirit of wisdom or the breath of the Most High Father, not just the sample or order, you see, or appetizer, but the full table, the full table spread of wisdom. The first man knew her not perfectly. No more shall the last find her out, for her thoughts are more than the sea, and her counsels profounder than the great deep. So there's most highest wisdom is vast. It, it's, it's a large, vast, or breadth and depth of information, understanding, wisdom. I also came out as a brook from a river and as a conduit into a garden, the Garden of Eden, the paradise. But this new paradise is going to be eternal and flawless. I said, I will water my best garden and will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook became a river and my river became a sea. So the Israelites are going to rule over the world from sea to shining sea that are growing in this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You see, fruits become trees that Seeds fall and plant more trees and more vegetables, you see, and spreads upward and outwards. The earth is not going to be able to contain the glory of the Lord, Yahweh, So the elect is going to be trans uh, back and forth to galaxies and planets and stars and solar systems and Milky Ways, just traveling like you're going to another city. See, Surah 24, verse 31. I said, I will water my best garden and will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook became a river and my river became a sea. Thus, I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning and will send forth her light afar off. A Yahweh Shai is the embodiment of that wisdom and the face of the Most High. You see, like a, a, a traveler that went to the fourth dimension, the third heaven, but coming back. Remember, he said, I am the light of the world. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. The lesson lights after him. The apostles, the, the elders, the prophets that have been since the world began. Gods. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, 
but for all them that seek wisdom. So the elect is hungry for knowledge, thirsty for wisdom and understanding, looking to be fed. And those that are sincere are feeding his sheep and not playing games. Let's go to close out with that one. When Jeremiah, <clears throat> I will give the pastors <clears throat> Jeremiah 3. <clears throat> and I'm in Isaiah. Bug out. I went to Isaiah. My goodness gracious. Isaiah must be talking about me. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> Of Jeremiah 3. Where is that at? Right here. Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Let's stop right there. See? So the elect are thirsty to be nourished with doctrine that's good for health and wellness, longevity, strength. Stability. And the elect men are sincere, not playing games. Chasing after money, holes, and clothes. All the nigga knows. As in the words of the beloved elder Menachem Zakba out of South Carolina. Bug out these men that are not sincere. And you know it by the fruits of their labors or lack thereof. That they got an empty tree. But nothing but little skinny twigs and vines sticking out with nothing on it for nourishment and health and wellness. These trees are only good for firewood. They be burned in the fire. Yep. Brother Aharon, Matthew 10 and 5. We got to go up to verse 5. Yeah. Okay, we don't have it, so we'll get it on here. <laughs> Matthew 10. So the Lord is gathering his heritage, his vintage, the vintage wine that he possessed from the beginning, the first and early church. Matthew 5, no, 10. And 5. These 12, Yahweh sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. And in, into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So his tabernacle is going to be with his first church, the congregation of the saints. When you go into that word church, it goes to the Greek. <laughs> Ecclesiastes, which means called out. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. If you're the general manager of a store, it doesn't mean that the people underneath you cannot commit incursions or infractions against company policy. Okay? The chief executive officer is going to come to you, not some lower level minimum wage guy that's only been on the job for six months. It doesn't mean they can't commit transgressions, but the Lord is looking at order, hierarchy. You only have, I hired you to be custodians of my word, managers of my doctrine, my laws, statutes, and commandments. <laughs> it doesn't mean the other nations can't commit transgression. Matter of fact, see, let me show you. Um, let's go here. Amos 1. I need to close this out. But he's talking to those who's in charge of the earth. Is it not written in your law? I have said, ye are gods. He's talking to the managers. Um, where did I want to go? Right here. Amos 1. 
There is no judgment without the breaking of the Most High's law or word. Amos 1 and um, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. So the Lord deals with order, rank and foul. He's not coming to people underneath you. You know, let me go, let me go and hold him accountable. He starts with the head and works his way down for judgments because he put the Israelites in charge of the nations. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, or Kodkadrash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala, and abide the Baal. We got next, Lord willing. Rakatham, meditating and contemplating daily on vicious, harsh judgments and righteousness. Daily meditation. Okay? Not my investments or my damn, my, my next job position and promotion. The Lord is going to destroy you with the caveman. Okay? Thank you, boss, for the $5 raise last month, boss. I'm going to get start getting here a little early in the morning to show my token of gratitude and appreciation. All you good boys and you good stepping fetchets, the Lord has you in his crosshairs. Tabernacle of David is being raised up, restored as at the beginning. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Palm your Sharala and imbibe the ball. A rock of thumb. A rock of thumb. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.